Hey, what's up, guys? Fresh in the mail. We've got the Apollo Twin Mark II. We're going to check this out. going to do a quick unboxing and then share some thoughts. Alrighty, this is how it comes. Packaging material. It's always good. All right, a lot of packaging material. That's very good. And um, the actual box is in here. So for reasons that I will explain a little bit later, I opted uh, for the solo and not for the quad or the duo. But um, with everything pretty much being equal, other than the processing power, the, the amount of plugins you can run at the same time. Um, so in this case, you have a solo core. This is the Mark II. Let's open this up. Um, it's sealed on both sides. We're gonna have to open up the seal here. No problem. And here it is in all its glory. This is the 12 watts adapter. All right, cool. That comes with a bunch of different country accessories. So depending on your country, this one, this one, this one, God save the queen. Europe, Deutschland, France, United States. Yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. The unit feels sturdy. This is metal and matches the new Retina MacBook Pros. Um, the late 2016 and onward in space gray. This gets connected via Thunderbolt. It does not come. It does not come with a Thunderbolt connector. That is a big downfall in my book. So this gets connected via Thunderbolt to your computer and it does not come with a Thunderbolt cable, which they are A, they're not cheap, and two, it takes time to get them. And uh, if you wanna get going right out of the box after you get this, you'd be disappointed. So I'm not a big fan of omitting this cable. Guys, how much can this be if you buy those wholesale? All right, headphone, I'm sorry, headphone input, uh, high Z instrument input. And here we have the two microphone inputs here on the side. And then we have two sets of outputs. Um, there's the power switch. So this unit feels sturdy and pretty much similar. It feels very similar to the original one. We're gonna connect this and put it through its paces. Uh, let me just quickly show you which uh, cable you need. It's the Apple Thunderbolt cable, 0 0.5 meters or two meters. I chose the shorter one because it's a lot cheaper. If you have a 2015 MacBook or 2016 MacBook Pro with USB-C, you need this adapter shown above. I'll put the link in there uh, to make it work. Um, but pretty easy. Let's have a look at the unit. So there's a button for everything and it clicks. Everything clicks. Uh, <laughs> loud feedback. I like that kind of. Um, you have a dim switch, a mono switch, a um, high pass filter switch. Uh, you can link it with other units. Um, the phantom power, of course. And um, this button controls either the volume for monitors and um, headphones, or like here for the preamp, the gain stage. Um, now let's go on to installing it. Pretty straightforward, hop onto the Universal Audio website. Um, we're on the Mac here and the PC, it's a similar link. Step one is to connect it and to power it up. And step two is to download the installer, which we did here. It's a pretty big download. Just say yes when installing it. And make sure you check mark everything. 2.5 gigs almost, that's a lot because they ins install every single plugin that they have instead of letting you choose which one to download. Uh, that's overcrowding the system. If you're on a MacBook Air with 128 gigs, this could be an issue. Um, after installation, you might have to um, update your firmware, do that, 
proceed, load it, and then power off the device. Once you power it back on, it'll be there. And after creating an account with your email and so forth, uh, you are being being greeted with some offers right off the bat. The ugly side of of the business shows marketing more money. You can get once in lifetime deals that you can only redeem now in the beginning of this relationship, not later on. So it's very tempting. I decided not to buy anything, and I won't buy anything because I have so many plugins already. And it comes with a good of uh, a good amount of free plugins. Um, here's all the plugins that you have. You can't sort them by free versus demo. Demo is 45 days. Uh, after further authentication, um, you can see the ones that are uh, included. So it's the real-time analog classics bundle, which includes the UA610B tube preamp and EQ. Universal Audio makes that as a hardware box. In this case, we're getting it as a software emulation with the Unison technology, the Teletronics LA-2A and the uh, 1176, two versions of it, all legacy. Those are old plugins, guys. Pultec, old plugin. Mix rack collection, rack collection and then raw distortion. It's Unison that's new. And then uh, soft tube, bass amp, and guitar simulations and reverb. That's a good amount. Here are the features of the unit as per the website. Um, pretty much updated AD conversion, ADDA, ADDA conversion. Sounds better than before from what I hear from other people. Not that noticeable, slightly perhaps. And uh, this unison enabled technology to emulate great vintage gear. You have to get the plugins, the new type of plugins that support that. That's a lot of money. Um, so... It's something um, you have to make a decision if you want to dive into that ecosystem. There's many reasons to do that. Um, me, personally, I don't do that. I'm going to save. I'm fine with those real-time analog classics that are included here. There's about 14 of them. And everything else I do after I track. This is great for monitoring and tracking if I need to. Everything else I'll do uh, with the hundreds of plugins I already own. Um, so... Playing back YouTube videos or any other sound that's coming from your computer also runs through that interface if so selected. You have a dim switch, a mono, a mute. Um, pretty cool. And the console is always running, you know. So uh, you can turn off the console. It's The unit is still functioning. In fact, the unit is functioning even when the computer is turned off. You can use all the features. But uh, really really nice implementation uh, of that mixer here and it integrates w very well with the DAWs. Uh, the, it jumps 18% to 40% once you enable uh, the 610, for example. This is the solo version that we have here. So even in the solo version, you have room for two or three more plugins, depending what you're using. So that's not too bad. Remember, you don't have to do too many shenanigans while monitoring. Um, high Z input on the left, headphone input on the right. Um, that's very convenient. Here, after tracking, I'm using it using GarageBand, for example, as a bass amp, uh, an MPEG simula simulation that I could be using. And uh, it's tracked. I track the clean signal and uh, can make my amp choice amp choices later. But again, some people want all the plugins, they use them, and it's great. So here, playing the bass. Directly in, um, no effects other than the 610B preamp and a little bit of limiting. I was really happy with the sound. So Universal Audio in my book, it's definitely a winner. Um, is it a true upgrade from the previous version? Well, let's think about that, right? The price is the same. What we're getting now is better AD conversion, and we're getting more processing power. It's what the ad says. But we're not really getting more processing power. We just have the option to buy a version with more processing power. There's a difference. So three, four years into it, they should have really started with dual-core processing and going up to four. 
you know, for the same price. I think, you know, kind of like squeezing the customer and saying, well, we're updating a little bit. And basically, technology evolves. And customers are not dumb. When they buy something, they want something better and faster uh, the next year for the same price. If not, the price should actually even drop because components become cheaper. Also, I think more plugins should be included. Uh, there should be greater discounts on plugins. That said, that's my opinion. I know a lot of you are going to disagree with that because companies, everybody wants a subscription model, right? Everybody wants you in a payment plan. And that sounds really, really bad. And I don't like it. I don't want to be on a payment plan. However, for companies to sustain their models and to support, keep supporting the hardware that they already built, having residual income or ongoing income from something that they developed in the past is actually not a, that bad of a model because they will have a tendency to keep supporting the hardware that they released two or three years ago. Remember, you'd buy a hardware and it was great, and then two or three years ago, oh, no drivers, right? Elises, hello, right? No drivers, no support, because... They have no intention. They have no gain from doing so. With Universal Audio, uh, they'll have a little bit more of an incentive to do so because they want to keep selling through their app store. I call it an app store. So everybody wants that subscription model, Microsoft, Adobe, and I understand. But us as consumers, we can see through that and we can make our choices. So I hope this helps you a little bit, gives you a little bit of an idea. My choice is the Universal Audio Twin Solo for $699. I would not buy the Duo for $899 or the Quad for $1299 because I'm getting the hardware, the quality, um, and a good amount of the plugins for that base price. Everything else, I have a super powerful Mac, or if you have a super powerful PC, you can run so many plugins, you can run circles around any. Apollo. Sorry, Universal Audio, but that's the truth. They're very powerful processors out there. Massive beats out.